Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you more about iboga. This is a plant medicine that I've actually created an extensive series about on my YouTube channel, which I'll be linking down below if you're coming across one of these initial videos or you're just curious to do a deeper dive. So iboga is a plant medicine, and I myself have taken part in four iboga ceremonies at the time of recording this video, all at Iboga Wellness Center in Costa Rica. And I honestly cannot recommend this experience more for people who are seeking life-changing transformation. Particularly one of my favorite things about Iboga Wellness Center and being part of those ceremonies is learning all about the Bwiti and the Bwiti wisdom. Levi Barker is the iboga provider at Iboga Wellness Center and he was kind enough to sit down with me for an interview where I asked him if he could share more about the Bwiti wisdom. This is such an incredible part of the ceremonies because it's just so special to learn about where this medicine comes from, how this medicine has relayed these very simple, potent, powerful messages into the people who have worked with this medicine over time and all of us who may have experienced it in present day or all of us who may in the future. This wisdom is such a beautiful part of the experience and the ceremony with iboga and I'm really excited for you guys to learn more about this today. So without further ado, here's the interview with Levi. We get a lot of questions about what Bwiti is and if you read online you hear a lot about it's a religion or a tribe and it, it can be somewhat religious in some of the Bwiti but it's definitely not a tribe anymore although there is tribal people that practice Bwiti and, and are Bwiti but these days really anybody that wants to come to Bwiti can. So there's three main types of Bwiti. There's the, the Sumba Bwiti that originally comes from the Pygmies so they're the ones that started it all. There's Masoko Bwiti, which came from the south of Gabon, which took the lessons from the Dusumba Bwiti and, and it added other elements to it, and specifically more, more healing elements and also using uh, other plants of the forest to heal. And then there's Feng Bwiti, which a lot of times in Gabon they call Dusumba Feng, which is synchronetic Bwiti, which incorporates a lot of different religions into it, including Christianity. And yeah, the styles are very different. The dance, the movements, even between um, all three of them. So for, for me, I've been initiated into different Masoko Bwiti sects. And so there's five different ones. I've been initiated into a couple of them. And our Bwiti deals with living life. So essentially looking at Iboga, as a tool to learn about ourselves and what life is for ourselves. And so a tradition is followed from that, an oral tradition that comes from the medicine itself that just gives us these very simple, grounded rules for approaching life and also the relationship with ourselves. And so when people come to Iboga Wellness, we share these lessons with people, but it's one thing to listen to it and that's what Iboga gives us, is the experience of being able to live and know these lessons. So, you know, knowing things is very different than having to believe things. And so Iboga gives us the knowingness. Experience is the only way that we actually learn and experience things. Otherwise, we have to be believe about things. And so Iboga, as people took it time and time again, just lessons about being a human kept coming up time and time again and an oral tradition has was spawned from there and so a lot of the Bwiti you know grew up listening to this when they're young if they are in the Bwiti when they're young but most of us in the West don't have anything like this like we don't have any rites of passage into manhood we don't have any spiritual path or philosophy to guide us through our life and so for a lot of people this can be a really beneficial framework for them to work from, to give them something to look to when certain situations come up in life and how do we manage them. And so in our Bwiti, we know that life comes first always. Like that's the biggest thing that can ever happen to us. And we talk about even, even with death, life has to come first. There is no death without life. And so that's the start of it all. And for us to be given our life 
is the greatest thing that can ever happen to us. And so when we come to Iboga, some people come in and just have lost the appreciation for life, stop valuing their life, you know, the wheel, or thinking about what is life actually about. And so the first thing that Iboga goes to work on is bringing the appreciation for life back into somebody. Because once we have that, we can then build it from there and grow from there. But if we don't have that part, life simply isn't going to work. And that's why life is a gift, because we're just given it. And how do we give thanks for that gift of life? When you get a gift, you want to be thankful for it. How do we give thanks for the gift of life? Is we do it via the relationship with ourselves and with the end goal of loving ourselves. Valuing, respecting our life, loving ourselves is how we give thanks for that gift of life. And once we, we have that, then um, really it's just a matter of, of trying and practicing and getting ourselves there. And so we know in the Bwiti when we come into this world, we come in by ourselves. We're going to also lead by ourselves as well. And so the, the very important aspect of the Bwiti is knowing who we are and what we want. And in order to strengthen that relationship with ourselves, we have to spend time with ourselves. So there's a, a big part of Bwiti is being there with ourselves, just being and allowing our mind to, to rest for a period of time. And we simply do that by tuning into two or three of our senses, such as what do I see, what do I feel? And just spend time doing that, giving our mind a chance to rest. And when our mind is not going at 100 miles an hour, we can actually listen to our soul or our inner voice inside for the guidance that we need. And we know in the Bwiti that our soul is our guide. Like that's what we want to follow when we have big decisions in life that we need to find the right answer on. And our, our life, or I'm sorry, our mind um, is used for a different set of tasks. Um, you know, things that we have to plan, <clears throat> accomplish with our physical bodies. But when we want to check in and get the guidance from the inside for the big things that we need to do in life, we want to be able to go inside and depending on how you look at that, whether it's your, your soul or the truth inside, your knowingness, that's where we want to be able to go with that. And if we don't have some present time, we're just not going to be able to hear that voice. If we're fully in the mind, which is definitely a sickness in the West, is living fully in the mind all the time. You know, things get very hard and, and we feel like we can't make any right decisions. I know I've certainly felt that way before that every decision was absolutely questioned and really self-sabotaged. And so using our senses is the way that we can listen in to our soul. And we know in the Bwiti, the only time ever actually happening is the present moment. And so our senses don't work in the past nor the future. They only work right now. And that's how we make sense of the world. If we want to know what's real and what's true, it's through our senses. That's the tools that we were given, including our intuition, our third eye. So five physical senses plus our intuition inside are the tools that we're given to operate in the world, to know what is real. And where we get in trouble a lot in the West is the difference between believing and knowing something. And the only way we can actually know something is via our senses. And so we really want to be able to confirm things and the Bwiti as being real. And we do that through our senses. And we're very careful with just thinking things in the mind or believing things. Whenever we don't have enough information to actually verify if something true, we're careful with it. If it's a positive thing, it's not a problem. But if it's, you know, beliefs that a lot of us carry through childhood into adulthood, like I'm not good enough, I can't do anything right, like those are very common beliefs people have about themselves. I'm broken. I can't be fixed. Those can definitely take you down. And so the medicine brings you back into the present moment to connect with what's really inside there and give you a look at it. And once we can see that it's in there, then we can go to work from there and start uh, really practicing. And so a lot of people coming to Iboga need that initial jostling inside in order to bring us back into ourselves because we come in just fully into the mind a lot of people and so a lot of people wonder why am i here 
on earth, you know, and in the Bwiti the very simple answer is we're here to live, to be able to experience life and this is our, our chance to, to live and so when we come into this world we talk about in the Bwiti that everything that we'll ever need is already here for us on planet earth, so our food, our shelter, even our loved ones, everything comes from nature. Nature gives us everything from the beginning. And so if there's something out there that we want, it, it is out there. And we make a distinction between things that come from man and things like laws versus the Creator. But the, whenever we are given life, the Creator also gave us the ability to create. And so in the Bwiti we see our job is to create our own life, create the life that we want to live and enjoy it as much as possible. And certainly not every moment is going to be enjoyable, but we, we want to have at least a, a good amount of time where we're not suffering, say, in our own mind. But those things can come up for everybody. Even the strongest of Bwiti still have to be diligent with their own mind. And so our job here on Earth is to be and create the, the life that we want to live. And beyond that comes down to what do we want to spend our time doing in life. One thing to be aware of is the things that we do, our titles, like those things in the end won't give us our own happiness. Like it has to come from inside. So say myself, working with Iboga, I love doing the work, but it's not the thing that I lean on to make me happy. I know that has to come from within. And so in the West, we've kind of been tricked into, you know, work as hard as possible, grind as much as possible to make money and be happy. It works for a lot of people, but if we're working some job that isn't in line with, with our soul or how we live our life, it's just not going to give us our, our happiness. And so really learning to depend on yourself and taking responsibility for your life is the ultimate point. It's not up to our spouse, our brothers, our sisters. It's up to us to learn how to, to live this life. And so in a lot of ways, coming to Iboga is like going to school fresh in to learn about living life. And that is the properties of Iboga. That's what it's there for. That's why it was given to us to really know ourselves and know about life and know what do we want in life because once we know what we want then we can just go after it we're not confused about what we need to do what direction do we go we just we see it and then start working to get there all right everyone i hope that you enjoyed learning more about the bweedy and the bweedy wisdom if you have been searching iboga researching online or hearing about other people's experiences you probably have come across the bleedy and maybe had some questions so i hope that this answered the questions for you if there are any more please leave them down below i'm always open to creating more content to support you on your plant medicine journey so wishing you a beautiful abundant day and i'll be seeing you again bye